What's up, War Report family? We are back with another great edition of Fireside with the War Report. This edition is brought to you by Golden's Cast Iron. They made the amazing cast iron fire pits that we uh, we ate off tonight. We had elk again. Yeah. The famous elk. The elk. Uh, and we had a lot of good things. I want to thank 2298 Vintage for providing all the good eats for tonight. Chef Harrison and his companion came through uh, and cooked for us nice. Amazing. Amazing. Hold so, on, wait a minute. I think we, last time we said it was exquisite. Exquisite. Still exquisite. exquisite. Still exquisite. It was still yeah. exquisite. We got... Some more exquisite gentlemen. Yeah, here man. This. this is the O line edition of Fireside with the War Report. Uh, joining us is Avery Jones, Gunner Britton, and Dylan Wade. Uh, guys, welcome. You know what? I should say welcome to Auburn. Yeah. Thank you. Because we got a bunch of transfers in here. Absolutely. Right? We got a bunch of transplants, Ike. Yeah, you guys just getting in town. Um, who do I want to pick on first? What Dylan. Dylan Wade. Okay. 100%. <laughs> you want me to call you Dylan D. Wade? What's up? What are we doing? Yeah. I prefer D Wade. D Wade, all right. Okay. So D Wade, right. <laughs> Texas guy. Yeah. What's the transition been like for you from Texas? I mean, Tulsa's not a big city, but it's bigger than Auburn. But Texas, Houston, now to Auburn, Alabama. What's it been like? Well, the switch has been not crazy, sort of the same. They're both like southern states. Uh, the culture here is kind of the same as. Texas. Mm. The heat might be a little hotter, might not be as controversial, but <laughs> the switch has been great. I, I love it here. Okay. What y'all listening to in Texas? Uh, it, it was, you guys were like Paul Wall, UGK for a while. It, yeah, they did listen to that in the, the older generation. I'm about to say, I'm about to say, yeah. <laughs> you, you more Travis Scott. Is that too, still too old for you? Are we going younger than Travis that? Travis Scott was cool, but you know. Oh. Okay. Yeah, where are we at with it right now in Houston? What's going on in Texas? Uh, I'm actually out of the loop, you know? I'm an uh -huh. Auburn kid now. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I hear there's a, well, your teammates have told us there's an NBA young boy epidemic on the team. We need to know how you guys feel about young boy. <clears throat> I mean, I, I like young boy. I think... Uh, this didn't kinda, sound like a glowing endorsement. No, no, he's, like, kinda, kinda, he's trying not to. He kind of overhyped a little bit. Oh, but, uh, okay. okay. He's overhyped. Over overhyped. He's got some good songs that I like. So. Okay. Gunner, what are you listening Gun to? Gunner's you? definitely yeah. a young boy listening. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. Um, I'm going to throw a crazy one. I'm a 21 Savage guy. 21 oh, Savage. And these dudes right. know I'm a young Dolph guy. Like, oh, okay. I repeat the dude. Like, that is 100 shots. Like, ah. Oh, right. I'll see you. I'm going to tell him. <laughs> Dylan, what do you listen to pre-game? What, what gets you going? Um, Hill songs, United, Oceans. Okay. Yeah. Are you being you being serious with that though? Oh uh, yeah. Because I I, like I, be, I rock with that. Okay. Yeah, it's peaceful, you know. It yeah. Gets you going. All right. That's yeah. what's up. So you like peace before the game? Yeah, peace before the destruction. You know? Okay. <laughs> For the destruction. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, to play offensive line, you have to play with a level of of like anger and aggressiveness yeah. all the time. Do you guys find that it's difficult to turn that off after the game? Do you just all go back to being like nice guys like right after or is it, is it difficult? Well, for me, it's kind of hard to like wind down, especially like if we take a flight to a game, we're on a flight back. I can't really take a nap on the plane because I'm kind of still like jittery after the game and I don't really want to, can't really get comfortable in a little seat like that. So okay, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of hard for me to like get back to that calm state. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Hold on, let's let's talk to uh, Mr. Gunner Britton right here real quick. So, Western Kentucky, mm. mm -hmm. before that you were in, where, where were you, high school? I was at Conway High School, That's South right. Carolina. South Carolina, right? Yep. That's so, right. country boy through and through, like you, you've been in small towns, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What's what's the hunting life like down here in Alabama for you? Uh, I haven't gotten as much hunting in. I've done a fishing? lot of fishing. Okay, I've sure. done a okay. lot, and like growing up, so I live like really close to the rivers. Like my whole like I have like three bass boats between my brothers and like my dads and stuff. So like okay. I'm always like fishing and stuff. And I've been down here. I mean, 
I got a couple ponds I go okay. to, and um, you know, I go out. A Do you take amount. these guys fishing, fishing with you? I've tried to take D Wade one time, <laughs> but D Wade, I actually I rigged up his pole what in the parking lot one day. Yeah, right in front. <laughs> like, of the facility. Yeah, literally in the front of the facility. I'm like rigging up his pole, and like everybody's coming out, like, what are y'all doing? But uh, yeah, I mean, I try to get out a good bit. Um, some of the places I go, you can't really like have people with you. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. Like, were, were you? Did you feel disrespected when they did the whole situation about like who, if you had to like be abandoned somewhere, which of your team? That, your name didn't get mentioned enough. I don't feel like uh, in that situation. Did you feel disrespected by that? Oh, like kind of low key. Okay, I, I, like you know, know what I'm saying? Feel like, like that I, was going um, I mean. A lot of my teammates, like the ones that picked me, I was kind of surprised. I was like, okay, like I wouldn't, you know, because yeah. I mean, I don't really, I mean, y'all see me, like I kind of, I come off with a little bit of a country boy vibe, but like what my teammates at Western used to call me was a cultured redneck. We're okay. like, cultured redneck. Cultured redneck. I know okay. who Young Dolph is and stuff, but also know how to go and, you know, that means you gonna fit in cows. everywhere. I'm definitely taking Gunner with me. Yeah, don't yeah. Matter. and that's the thing, like, yeah. it's, you know, yeah. especially in camping, I'm like literally, the that's <laughs> yeah. how you survive. Is you got to be able to fit in anywhere. Yeah. So I mean, okay. that's kind of how I like describe myself. Well, speaking of fitting in, again, you guys all transferred in, right? How are you fitting in in Auburn? How has the community welcomed you? Like, do you guys <laughs> feel like this is a different family vibe than what you're used to? Uh, yeah, I mean, Auburn showed a lot of love. Um, for me, ECU showed a lot of love too, but it's kind of different in the SEC. Like, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people told me it's kind of like NFL teams down here in the state. So it's like, it, it's different. People know your name. People can tell who you are just by you walking in the room, like going mm -hmm. to class. People look at you. So, yeah, it's cool. What about you guys? How are you? How are you fitting in in this culture now? I mean, I. I grew up in South Carolina. I was a South Carolina fan, so like mm. I know how football is in the SEC. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially watching a team that was in the SEC. Like, we were season ticket holders. Like, I know how diehard fans are, and especially here at Auburn. Like, I see guys, and like, I mean, you'll be out in like stores and stuff, and like people like just know who you are, and like just very welcoming and stuff. Like, even when I came on my official visit, like we went to two different stores and just kind of like looked around at Auburn gear and stuff and the people knew who I was. You know what I'm mm. saying? Just knew exactly where I went to high school, where I went to college and stuff like that. Nice. And I mean, yeah, like they've literally been stalking you that's online. A, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even we, um, for like a year. That's yeah. what we were talking about. We did fan day and like it was me and D Wade sat beside each other because our numbers are one away and like people were like coming up and like asking him about Tulsa and asking me about Western Kentucky and like, you know, where I was at before, you just didn't have that same like vibe. We're like, Okay, this guy plays football, yeah. but it's here. It's like no, that's Gunnar Britton, or that's Dylan Way, that's Avery Jones. Like they yeah. know exactly who you are and like nice. your whole story. And I mean, I, it's special. I mean, I've loved it ever since. What I've about you, here. Dylan? Like hometown vibe from Houston to Auburn? Yeah. Um, well, compared to Houston, it's it's a smaller city, but it's a bigger city. Like everybody is so much closer, and like a city from Houston. To like Dallas is hour and a half, something like that. Mm. City out here, like from here to Tuscaloosa. We won't even talk about Tuscaloosa because it's the opposition. Yeah, like, yeah. Here is like the same thing. Like Houston doesn't like Dallas, so we don't like Tuscaloosa. So it's like okay. we we have the same rivalries, and I guess I I was a perfect fit for Auburn when it came okay. down to it. Oh, oh, oh. I was about to say, I, I, I want to talk about the fit, right? So there are a couple of different connections prior to getting here. And you don't have a coach, but you played against Auburn last mm -hmm. year. That's so right. So you, of these three, know what it's like to play in that stadium yeah. that they're going to be walking Well, that's um, what I told these dudes, and, like, I told a bunch of dudes on our team, like, because I talked to – we got some guys from North Texas, and so I played against them too. And just being like, y'all don't know how it is to, like, truly – be in the stadium and like you know and even I said it in one of my interviews like I've had 90,000 people cheer against me from over. right <laughs> and like even the craziest thing that kind of stuck out to me when we got there so I always do a lap like in pregame like part of my just kind of ritual of like what I do when I get to the stadium and I remember when they opened the stadium like two hours before the game and like you see people like running to the student section yeah. and I'm like guys like I ain't even got taped yet like you know, and there's people already waiting in line. Like, it's already full just in the student section. And, yeah. like, how just the whole atmosphere of it was. Like, seeing, I mean, I played at Arkansas in 2019, and it was just two different vibes of, like, how much more diehard fans are here. And, I mean, at that time, I believe y'all were four and seven or mm -hmm. four and six. So, like, it was, you know, it wasn't like y'all were 
nine and two trying to go win 10 games. Right. You know, y'all were already in a down year, but Cadillac kind of had some juice brought yeah. back and stuff. And I mean, it was special. Like it was different. I mean, seeing the Eagle, like in person. It's like, the best tradition in college football. One, it's the, like I tell these guys, like that thing's big. Yeah. Like he was walking <laughs> on the sidelines and I'm like, I'm sitting in my chair, like we get him off the field. And I'm like looking and I'm like, dude, like. Oh, yeah. you guys haven't got a chance to see the Eagle up close. <laughs> nah, we ain't. They yeah. let it loose at a baseball game in the spring for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that thing is dangerous. <laughs> like, <laughs> they let an evil. endangered species What's loose from the top of the stadium. Big, <laughs> it flies around. Wait, I, I'm interested. Who here has heard the, st the War Eagle Ooh. story? I got it. You got it? Yeah. There are versions of this. So, what, first, what version did you hear? Gunner? The first one, it was, was it after World War II? Yeah, they there you played go. Auburn, Alabama. So it's funny, so my girlfriend's brother told me the story. Like, but um, so it was Auburn, Alabama. This dude brought, like, he came back from World War II and they flew it around the stadium and they won the game, but the Eagle actually died. Like right after the game, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it and died in midfield. That's, yeah, and like, that's the story. And they came back and won. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we were like War Eagle ever since, yeah. apparently. All right, so, okay, we talked them so. Yeah. so. All right, so, <laughs> well, we, we were talking about fit, though. I wanted to come back down here because D Wade, your former coach at yeah. Tulsa, now the offensive coordinator. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so talk to me about how you've been getting these guys together about what they have to go through for the offensive system that uh, you got. How, how, I mean, is, is it a lot of the same kind of stuff that you were doing at Tulsa? How much, how different did Coach Freeze uh, tinker with the stuff? I mean, you ain't got to give me no details, okay. but I'm saying like. For the most part, it's sort of the same, but you know, we have a Coach Freeze tweaks in there. Yeah. He's made some advancements and made it better, more efficient. And as far as bringing these guys along, I mean, Gunner's been doing this for a long time, so has Avery. They already knew what they were doing when it came to the plays. They they fell right in too. Okay. So like they kind of sure. already knew. Mm. Let's uh let's talk about string and conditioning for a second, right? Uh you guys had the kettlebells, golden cast iron kettlebells. Uh you looked in the camera, you said, get your weight up. How how have you gotten your weight up under this new strength and conditioning program? Are you stronger? <laughs> like like, you know, are you guys playing heavier? Like, what's the deal? No, nah, I'm definitely heavier. I'm, I'm probably a good 20 pounds heavier than what I was last year. So, okay. Uh, not not bad weight either. Like, good weight where I feel like I'm um, still athletic, still moving fast. Like, I know I can move. Um, yeah, Coach Dom's really gotten us right. Like, he, he plays no games, no days off. Like, he's uh, 10 toes down every time, every – no soft workouts. We all every time we get in there, we're pumping weights. So. Are you guys no hands on hips as well too? Is yeah, no hands on hips, no hands on head, no bending over, none of that stuff. Like he'll get on you for everything. He kind of built that culture like with everybody. Mm. When we talked um, during the building report segment, you said you like the tempo and the the, the pace that you know you saw was going to be happening with this. Are you guys yeah. in like Western Kentucky? Y'all probably some tempo stuff. Yeah, so. I mean it's. It's different than what we're used to, but I'd say, like, even going on whatever you said, like, what Dom's done, because, like, that was, coming on my official, that was, like, my selling point. So, like, mm. one, y'all know Laramie Tunzel is. Yeah. Dude still right. works out with Dom. Like, Dom's, like, the best in the game at what he does. And, like, to me, our workouts and our conditioning complement what we do on the field, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no walking around in the weight room, just like when we get on the field, we're trying to play fast. Like that's kind of how the lifts are set up. And I mean, the dude has gotten me like in my, I mean, we're what, 23? And my yeah. body feels better now. And like, I feel stronger than I was, you know, when I was 19. Amazing. So I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely, it was a it was an adjustment for sure. But have, like. Have the facilities helped? I mean, like. Uh, um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The facilities are crazy, <laughs> right? Facilities. Where you guys came from? Right. Nutrition, yeah. like even I tell these dudes, like I remember, when we first, when I first got here, they were still like moving over from the old facility. Mm -hmm. And like some of the guys were like, dude, like this place like sucks. And I'm like, guys, yeah, like, <laughs> this is nicer than when I had it. Well, like, <laughs> and even um, some of the guys have been there, like, cause I still get messed up. So Western, our facility was in our stadium. So oh, like wow. you would always be like, hey, I'm going to the stadium. Cause like, it was the same thing. Yeah. And I said it to one of the dudes here and he's like, bro, like, what are you talking about? Like going to the stadium? Like what are you doing in the stadium? Or yeah. I'm like, oh, like my bad. I mean the facility. Like, cause it's, you know, here it's like. They're, Two different yeah, places. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But um, no, I mean, it's, they definitely, they take care of you. And as much as they push you to, you know, be your best and work you hard, they take care of you on the backside. So. Mm. Uh, I gotta ask this, like, 
Do you got? I mean, because South Carolina, North Carolina, Houston, and you brought up Tuscaloosa, but. I need to know what level of hate you guys have for Alabama <laughs> oh now that you, now that you're here. Like, do you get it? Do you get that that we yeah. that we don't like them? Yeah, I might have not have gotten it when I first got down here, but uh, you learn pretty quickly when you're just walking around oh, and stuff. Absolutely. They they they're talking about Bama like get ready to play Bama like that's a big game. So mm. yeah, it's no games played around down here. So. Yeah, like yeah. like like jobs are lost. Yeah, <laughs> so, well, you know what I mean. What he's saying, I mean that's like. I went to academy one day, and like the lady, like I'm wearing like an Auburn football shirt. She said something about like we got to play Bama, like and you're like, okay, like no, Bama's got to play us. Like, yeah, there it is. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they got y'all you know, talking right now. All right. Ask, you know, it's not you know talking crazy, but I mean it's true. At the end no, of the that's, day, that's like, the right. That's the right thing and, to say. You know, uh, we're playing 80 plays, 90 plays a game. Like they got to play us, just like we got to go play them. And yep. I mean, yeah. to me, it's the SEC, like. Look at what Tennessee did last year. Yeah. You know, it, it was a four OT game last exactly. year too. And I mean, everybody in the SEC can win the SEC. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, so that's okay. kind of. Okay. Like, you know. So hold on, we we were just talking working out. I've been asking the other guys this question: When you get into your workouts, what's the thing that you absolutely hate? Like. It's, this is punishment for me if you're making me do this. Last year was stadiums. Out. Yeah, they were. They no, did they a lot of stadiums. Year, and some of them you. used to do it in a weighted vest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. What are you guys doing that you hate? Sure, one what? lift, bro. I already know my one lift. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Avery's like, man, I do everything, bro. Like, what are we, what are we talking about? Now, sometimes we, we do bear crawls in the <laughs> as a warm up, and I really don't. Bear like crawls that. as a warm up? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's not like what bear crawls you're thinking either. Kind of like, like a slow bear yeah, crawl. Like, it's like. Taking our time with it, going side to side. Oh, he's evil. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. I don't like that one, but you know, I'm like that's uh, that's in my two. But these these no banded side planks. Oh, yeah. I don't know mm. what it is about doing a banded side plank. And like even Dom knows, like he's over there smiling when we do have him in our workout because he knows I'm over there dying during them. I don't know why. Yeah. Hey, listen, l- learn to love something you hate. That's how you be great. Well, what I'm about gonna do you? It, so. Um. If I had to pick one, I would probably say up downs for like a teammate being late. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question. Yeah, <laughs> somebody. Oh no, the wide receiver like group. That's what they were talking about. Who they had to, had to do the up downs. They, they said, like, who's the? Look, <laughs> all right, give me the T. <laughs> if somebody's <laughs> messing up and y'all are doing up downs, who is it? Who is who's it most likely to be the dude oh, that I'm messes not up? I was like, I plead the fifth. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can't even do it. Like Are you that. messing up? Is, is it for, what is it for being late or is it for being like what what kind of things do you do up downs for? Well, I'm trying to. So we do something called no rep. So that would be like if someone's loafing, like the mm. rep doesn't count. You get what I'm saying? Oh, okay. But like an up down would be isn't it just pretty much? There's like it's segmented. Like if someone's late, like it's like the amount of up downs you do is based on like what time they get there. If right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So we might start with 15, okay, yeah. he might wait a little bit. They're still not there. We might hit another 15 like kind of based off how he's feeling about it. And like y'all know how like <laughs> conditioning is, like it's already kind of tough and then right. you, like now I got to do extra up downs or like, you know, normally I wouldn't have to do up downs now I'm just right. doing extra up downs and right. then that cuts into your break time and it's mm-hmm. it's We a got tough a bunch one. of um you guys are how much eligibility do we have? Here? Oh, that's my last year. Last year? Mm-hmm. We got, what, about four more months? Yeah, 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 four more months. <laughs> what about you? You? Oh, I got four more months. Four more months? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You know we have COVID, so it's like... Okay. Between two and three, I don't know the, the okay. correct number. Okay, confusing. So All right. Like, Listen, COVID, we'll get you. our you guy, know. Cole Kublick, has done at least Six separate segments on D Wade. Yeah. Feels like you're a pro prospect. Feels like you do a lot of great things. Yeah, thank you. What my guy. kind of things have they told you that you need to work on since you've been here? Oh, uh, well, Coach Thornton has told me plenty of things I need to work on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. In the beginning of camp, we just got Jalen. He came in with some different moves. He was kind of beating me on the inside, so I've been overemphasizing like inside hand placement, getting my head inside, Mm -hmm. and pretty much that's it, to be honest. I worked on my pass set all summer, you know, got in the lab, grinded, went two, three times a day just so I could figure it out, and 
I would just say my inside head placement now. I'll be good. Okay. Um, do you guys like? Did you guys? Do you guys do that work together? Or like, how does the offensive line work out in the offseason? Uh, it's, what is it? It's normally different times, right? Yeah, we uh, uh, off season probably we work. I mean, we lift at different times, yeah. but uh, we'll get together and do some on the field yeah. type workouts and uh, like D Way was saying, pass sets yeah. and like run game stuff. I lifted with this guy all summer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we did. I mean, we did that. We did some film stuff, like just trying to like, because like a lot of people don't realize like O line. Like it's to me, you have to understand what everybody's doing right. to like understand what you're doing, like your place in the scheme, and like yeah. especially when you look at a defense, like even what he was talking about, like getting beat inside, like what makes a defense end go inside? Like, why is he going inside? Why can't he go inside? Because, like, a D lineman just can't go inside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, you know, if you know football, that's just not how it works. Same thing with the safety. Safety can't just come and blitz off the edge if there's nobody covering him over top. So, like, understanding all of it, you know, I mean, that's a big thing for me. Like, especially, like, even you said it earlier when you are talking about, like, Coach Monty and, like, bringing an offense, like, how me and Avery have done it a lot, like, how many ways can you learn to run inside zone? You know what Not I'm saying? Ways, like it's, yeah. it's just, at the end of the day, it's just different techniques and like right. a different way to like get to the same end goal, if that makes sense. Mm. So, so let's talk about the preparation portion though, because what you're talking about, a lot of that is, is film. Mm -hmm. So what, what helped you all, like, I don't, what's your film life like? Like what, do you, are you a film junkie? Like, or is like, how did you get into learning how to do that and how are you teaching the younger guys the importance of doing that kind of stuff? Um, I mean, for me, like, I mean, I have a set kind of, so when I was at Western, the often, our head coach was um, Tyson Houghton, and his dad was um, Kim Houghton. And he actually was, a, he's in the Florida Hall of Fame. He played for Steve Spurrier, under, like, played, he was a center for Steve Spurrier at Florida, like, in the 70s or whenever he won the Heisman, right? And he kind of, like, oh, understand how to, like, watch film the right way if that may like i remember i came in one day and i'm like watching film and he's like i was like 19 he's like you're just doing this all wrong <laughs> like this is how you got to do it and like ever since then now like i understand like not just watching what a guy does but watching the coverage watching every aspect of it and stuff and i mean helping the young guys like to me it was kind of what i was talking about earlier like when i want to open a gym is like you know, for me, like, what knowledge is good for me that I can't share with anybody else? Like, even, I mean, me and D-Wade, dang near, like, we sit together in meetings, like, we watch film together, like, try to, like, show him some stuff that he might not have seen yet. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, I mean, you remember the day we were talking about, like, different coverages and stuff, like, talking yeah. about plays? And, like, understanding, like, I mean, just a simple, if it's cover four, the nickel can't blitz. You give them like stuff like that. Now, hold on. It's, do you want to be a coach one day? Uh, I did for a while, and then I realized, like, coaching college football is, you do not get a lot of family time. And at yeah. some point, yeah. you know, but, I mean, that's, you know, for me, like, helping pass on, like, Connor Lou's another one. Like, these guys will talk Connor Lou's just an unreal kid to be 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And, like, what can I help this kid do to, like, further himself that, you know, I might not have had when I was a freshman in college compared to, you know, what these guys have. And just kind of, I mean, being a source of, like, I mean, Avery will tell you, it's almost like being an extra coach out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. you've seen so much football. And, I mean, even D-Wade's seen a lot of football. We're like, you get a kid that's 18 that, like, high school to college football is, like, especially offensive line is different. Like, I always say, like, receivers can go run a route. And, like, you can run a route in high school and go run it in college. Like, yeah, there's some technique stuff. But, like, O-line, it's a different world from high school to college. And, I mean, the same thing with the college to the NFL. So, it's like... If I can help these guys transition and like understand like why they're doing something, right? Yeah. It's kind of like the big thing for me. So I mean, that's kind of you know our role in being older guys in the room and stuff. So nice. do, do you guys feel like you're the smartest position group? Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. He's like, I mean, because he brought up the film watching, <laughs> yeah. right? And you, you're like, hey, we got to know all these different things. Yeah, we got to know where everybody's got to be on the field. Right. No, yeah, the you, one, receivers can go run a route. I would just say quarterbacks. Quarterback, just but that's be, like yeah. quarterbacks. Like, like if your quarterback's not the smartest dude yeah. on the field, like, would you not be kind of worried? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 
But that's, but so that's, I mean, that's a big thing, though, because you guys got to help the quarterback out a lot mm-hmm. as far as just making sure, well, from protection, of but course. But the smartest group, but just though. Yeah. Well, group, in overall, understanding, group overall, like, overall us, yeah. How, how, is, how has that been like with the quarterbacks as far as communicating, like, what you're seeing versus what they're, like, who, who's doing the talking, like, what, what's that been like for the QBs? Uh, I mean, protection-wise, I think it starts up front. Like, we know what to, you know, look for, and then I think – just communication wise, just communicating with the QB about what we're seeing and how we're going to block it. And, you know, with the running backs too, because they, uh, they help block a lot. So mm-hmm. if we're all on the same page, like plays usually run pretty smoothly. Um, our, our running backs are great at blocking and uh, linebackers that like to, you know, plug gaps, which our, our linebackers love to do. So, you know, I think we, uh, we, as long as we stay on one page and communicate and do all that stuff right, we'll, we'll be fine. Does it frustrate you when the QB doesn't stay in the pocket? Uh, I mean, Are you like, can, damn it? Uh-huh. <laughs> if he can run and right make a, here. a little play, then I'm like, okay. Yeah. But, you know. yeah. Uh, is it easier to block for a pocket? I mean, is uh, it? Yeah. 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 Here's what I'll say about it. Being a tackle, like, I've – quarterbacks will save me more times than not. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay. if a quarterback will step up, like – so I can't be mad if sometimes like, like, is it frustrating if he rolls out and my dude gets off and makes a tackle and it's like, yeah. you know, but it's I also mean, like how many times you can be mad up. until he runs and makes a huge That's play. What I'm, you know what I'm and saying? You're not mad anymore. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The same thing with the running backs. Like, what we talk about, like we know our, the running backs' jobs, even not in only protection, but like run scheme stuff. Yeah. Like we know what the running backs' aiming point is, like what he's looking at. So it's like, for us, like yeah, if the running back bounces, it, you're like ah. But then he cuts one for 60 yards. I'm like, okay, like, you kind of, you know what you're doing, too. Like, you know, okay. So what I want to know from you guys, let's, <laughs> this, this has nothing to do with football, all right? Um, People want to know. Yeah, because one of you, one of the guys in your room came up when we asked in another interview. Who is the guy that's taking forever to get ready to get dressed when it's time to go somewhere because they got to be like, get this everything right. has got to be right. Who is, who's the guy? Uh, who's the pretty boy? Jeremiah Wright. Oh, Jeremiah Wright. Jeremiah. That's a new one. <laughs> well, who's Jeremiah? They said Cam Stutz was a pretty boy. Cam, Cam, that's oh a good one too. too. Cam he's just knows everybody, dude. Yeah. Cam knows everybody in this town. Oh, he's he's the popular. Guy. He's been here forever. Yeah, he it's like six everybody. years. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's really just knows everybody. Right. He ought to know everybody. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Right. So Jeremiah Wright. So, uh, he he. What what's what's what style style wise? What is he doing? Oh, like with the fits. Yeah. Okay. He got this nice. uh I think it's Jalen Ramsey jersey. Mm. When he wear that with the jeans and the the Jays, some fat jewelry, you know. Um, I see, I see, a, I see you Jay walking tonight. You know what I'm saying? Oh, of course you had that. Jalen <laughs> Ramsey jersey, huh? Yeah, it's okay. a pretty cool fit. But yeah, he got a unique drip. Like he also has a big puffer. I know, it's a little different when it comes wait, to wait the a minute. Drip. Has he worn this since he's since you've been here? This big puffer jacket is. Oh yeah, he wore the puffer to the wellness. I'm talking <laughs> about this is like a, a thousand it's, dollar jacket. It's but like, it's hot, bro. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. This wasn't in the uh, fall. This was like when I first got here in January. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, okay. okay. All right. So it was a little, right. little cool. I'm about to say, what are we sure. doing right now, man? Yeah. We're about to be out there passing out. <laughs> nah, Yikes. Okay. So all right. So, so we got Jeremiah Wright. Jeremiah Wright. We're building now. the club. Yeah. We got Cam. Yeah. Michael Riley Ducker. Yeah. Robbie, even though he don't want to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> and now we got Jeremiah. And Coy. And Coy. Yeah. yeah. And Coy. That's right. Micah and then, does. Micah gets fitted. Micah's always fitted every time I see him. Okay. I'll give him that one. We've heard. Quick football question. Uh, we had running backs last, right? So we talked about your relationship to the quarterbacks, but let's talk about the running backs and blocking for those guys, man. What is your view of that room 
and how have you guys worked with them on what the run game is going to look like? I mean, you can't run the ball in the SEC, man. You're going to have a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, running back room, all dogs, like every single one of them, uh, not afraid to run between the tackles and really get out, you know, even from the biggest guy to the smallest guy, Brian Batty, to, you know, uh, anybody, you know, uh, they're going to hit the gap, they're going to run. You know, we, we want to protect them. We want to make them, you know, open a hole so they can make plays. So. They make us look good, you feel me? And we make them look good, so. Uh, yeah, we all kind of, you know, work together. We all, you know, they success is based off our success, our success right. based off them, so, yeah. Okay, all right. I, how different is Damari Austin? So talk to me about Damari Austin, man. It's, it's He's point. different, right? They're, yeah, they're all different, man. <laughs> they're all, like, specializing to certain things. But, like, I mean, they all run. They all run the ball really, really well, like top to bottom. I mean, these guys will tell you, like, I mean, I've everybody we put in. I mean, even the freshman Jeremiah gets oh, in, Cobb. and like, oh I'm like, this dude's just out of high school, like, Cobb, you yeah. know, yeah. And I mean, that's what I mean. They all kind of shine in their own certain way and stuff. But I mean, they're all Demaris. He's electric. I just got a question, but before we move on from this, I, I've, I've told some people that I feel like you guys could be a top three running game in the SEC this year? No question. No, Without a doubt. Absolutely. You think you'd be a top three running game in the right, SEC this sure. year? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Number one. All right, All right. we're going to need to see that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this, again, this ain't got nothing to do with football. Well, it's it's got something to do with athleticism. Um, I've asked the other groups. It's not something you typically ask an O-line group, but which one of you guys on the O-line doesn't have to be other three of you runs the fastest who's the guy that like you gonna you gonna line it up and race who's gonna win i mean i'm gonna say me every time i'm number oh. one bro oh <laughs> d, 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 d wait you sounded pretty confident yeah, I'm number one. Oh, houston stand up <laughs> yeah i'm number one yeah D Wade might be close, but you're not even chiming in here. You like you, well, you you're getting caught. Go ahead and look I was about to say, yeah. let, let's look, let's go to the other side of this though. <laughs> yeah. Who is the guy that you know for sure you can outrun every single time? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> come on, now. just ask him who has the only catch in college. There is one right. lineman on our oh, roster who so has that, a catch. Th that, that brings me oh, to my other question. <laughs> What other positions did you guys grow up playing besides O line, and what made you stick with O line? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Man, I don't play tight end, D line. I don't play linebacker. Uh, shoot, I went from playing O line in high school to playing D line. Played a little D line in college, you know. So I've been kind of all over the place. Okay. So what made you decide O line is where I'm gonna stick and stay? Oh, uh, I mean, I feel like O line just felt the most natural for me. Like I'm. I might not be the most flexible guy, but I always felt like I was athletic. So, I mean, D lineman's kind of like more reactionary and I'm more of a thinker. So, you know, I think O-line's just kind of like a better fit for my personality and how okay. I'm built. Okay. Gunner, talk to me. Um, and D-Wade can attest. I was a quarterback and asking, I'm money, am I not? Yeah, you can't throw like, it. Right. Okay, yeah. Gunner Britton, emergency quarterback, got right. you. Like, Luke Deal said something equally as foolish, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm willing to hear you I played, So I played until like seventh grade, and okay. then I transferred to a different school, and they already had a quarterback. And the dude ended up playing at App State, so I was like, okay, he's pretty good. I'll, All right. I'll accept my role. But I played DN and tight end a little bit and B team, and then the first, like when I really like dedicated the offensive line was my sophomore year. My coach was like, listen, you're 6'3", 200 pounds. I need you to gain 50 pounds and play left tackle. I was like, all mm. right. Like, hey, starting on varsity, I'll take it. And here I am mm. nice. nine years later. So Nice. All right. Hey, growing up, I played running back and linebacker. <laughs> until, <laughs> yeah, until I got too heavy, they said you can't run the ball no more. So, okay. So I went to D-line, O-line. Well, I did not go to – I went to O-line my first year of high school. I was playing basketball, and the coach was like, yeah, man, you're not playing no more. You're my uh, office alignment. So ever since my sophomore year, I kind of played O-line and honed in those skills. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you've played what what position? Now, apparently, Coach Free says you're going to be all over the offensive line. You're going to be the, the Swiss Army Knights out there. But what, what different spots along the O-line have you guys all played? Yeah, have you just been centered the yeah, whole time? Yeah, I've just been centered the whole time. Okay. So you, you just like being in charge. Gotcha. Yeah, I like being in charge in the mm -hmm. middle. 
Got you. But you played I've guard, played tackle, all five. center. Yeah. I've played. I was a tight end at Western for a oh, little yeah, bit. Oh yeah. Okay. Wait. I got to get back in this because you said you have an actual catch in a game. Yeah. What 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 game was this? What happened? What was the situation where you? Fourth you, and eleven. We were playing Troy. We were down by fourteen. Batted ball. I catch it and got a first down. Oh well. I thought oh. you were talking about using like a four. It counts. Hey, it counts. Ask him hey, it counts. Ask him about it. You they saw it. it I saw. Yeah. It was hey, a it was a good hey, catch. Twelve around. yards. He showed him. Fourth and eleven. I'm about to say, but he got the first. You got the first down. You'll see it. I catch it. I like put the ball in my other hand. I grab my guard. Like push him up. Get a block. Get a first down. All right, okay, we're going right. to make sure we get a, the link of this out so y'all <laughs> can see That's going on him. on Twitter yeah. tomorrow. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you. It's on, if you go on my Instagram and stuff, it's down there now because I got a bunch <laughs> of Oliver stuff, but it's it's in the tag somewhere. How right. hard is it to play different positions along the line? Um, I would say the technique's a little bit different. For me, like back to earlier when I was talking about knowing everything. Yeah. Like for me – even in our as simple as like a gap scheme run. My brain, the way it works is I can't just know what the tackle does. I gotta know what the guard, the center, like everyone's doing. Cause to me it's like, football is like a puzzle. Like it all kind of like, everybody's fighting for these six gaps on all, like that's literally what it is. You're right. fighting for two A's, two a, B's and two C's. So like for me, it's just like, that's how I like learn it. So I mean, the technique's different, obviously like, the biggest difference is going from tackle to guard, I would say. Like, center's its own, like, little category. I mean, even he'll tell you, like, it's a whole different world. But, like, the technique stuff's just a little bit different, especially in our offense. We go from three-point to two-point. So, like, mm. imagine you do Indy all year in a two-point stance and, like, hey, go get in a three-point. I mean, especially with me, like, the other day, like, hey, go to the left side and play left guard. You mm. know what I'm saying? Compared to just, like, if you go from right tackle to left tackle, it's not – it's a different technique. It's uh, you got to flip it, but it's also like you know, yeah, that's, it's kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. conceptually but, I mean, different, but you just flip it yeah. to the other side. Right? But I mean, it's you know, I mean, even I pride myself on you know being a swift army knife who like knows all the techniques and like you know, I mean, even it goes back to watching film, like helping the younger guys. Like, what's a better example to you know show somebody how to do it if you can't do it all? You yeah. know, so I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. What about you, D-Way? You tack you've been tackled the whole time? You've ever played a little guard? What's yeah, up? Yeah, I've played only left tackle and right tackle. Yeah, that's about it. What about your guy Muskrat? He that came down here. Were, were, were you pitching it to him? You was like, hey, man, I want to slide on down here. You know? Yeah, I hosted Muskie on his OV. You know, I, I talked to him the whole time he was here. We went around campus, uh, gave him a little tour. I told him. Get everything he needed to hear, and he, he made the decision at the end of the he day. He made the right decision. Yeah. There it is, right there. All right. All right. Players recruiting players. So, How that? We, we, we also, you know, we're around our, our Golden's Cast Iron Fire Pit and chilling out here in the backyard. I know a little bit about, you know, you like to hunt, fish, all that kind of thing. You said you're pretty much like a homebody video game guy when you're chilling out, but I don't know anything about D Way. What are you doing when? To get your mind off football, like, how, how are you decompressing uh, in your off time? I really do it all, if we're being honest. See, I can go fishing or I can play the game. I can go to the gun you, range. You smashing him and in in, y'all y'all ever played? <clears throat> nah, uh, he ain't never played with me. He ain't want to work. I, don't, I think he's scared a little bit. Oh, because I'm going to say, because when, when we talked, I talked to him before. He said he could get anybody that work in it. So what? Madden, right? You sure Madden? do. And Madden. <laughs> Maybe we can run this right now. <laughs> Go get the Hold on, wait a minute, because Coy said the Coy same said thing. Coy said he was like player one of the best in the world. In the world bro. Yeah, he said he was there when the game was in All right, man. <laughs> yeah, man I, played me. Listen, I'm telling where's my camera? Which camera are we at? I'm going to go right here. Hey, for the rest of the Auburn football team that's out there watching this, we're going to have a war poor Madden, Madden tournament. tournament. Yes, Because we got to sure. settle this, because everybody think that they got the sticks under control. We gonna make that challenge. Who y'all y'all down for that? You play Madden too? Oh, I can. Look, all right. We gonna I'm, have I'm we, a coach out there. We're gonna, we gonna have a Madden tournament. We'll have it in we, two, two, we, nine, we're not getting all of this talking. Elk, elk and Madden. Yeah. Yeah, that's how we're gonna do <laughs> it. We're gonna, we gonna settle this. Okay. All right, but all right, so video games, you go hunting, fishing, you can do all of that, yeah. but so just whatever. You just down with, with Yeah, I'll just be vibing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. I ain't mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. But if you're going out uh, around here, because uh, here's what I wanted to ask. Again, South Carolina, North Carolina, Texas, but you guys, like you got you would sound with North Carolina first, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. North Carolina, right? 
and then eventually left. But were there was there pressure for you guys to stay in state and play ball? Or did you all? I mean, like from from high from school? high school, yeah, yeah, from high school, yeah. Oh no, it was no pressure at all. No pressure at all. Yeah, no. Nah. Houston never killed me. Forget those boys. UTM killed <laughs> me. So, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I was a, I was a Carolina fan growing up. Okay. So I was like, okay, I go to North Carolina. It didn't work out. So went to ECU. I was like a little closer to home. So you know, still a good situation. But you know, I wanted to go somewhere where football was really like the main attraction. Really mattered. So now I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Gonna where are you? Uh, I mean, I was a two-star in high school. I had like three FBS offers, so I just kind of took what I knew. And, I mean, that's Who's going to give up. me the scholarship? Right. That's where and I'm so, going. So I ended up in Western Kentucky, and I mean, you know, I was blessed enough to kind of actually grow into my body and develop as a player, and then, you know, got an extra COVID year and was like, you know, let's go play the biggest brand of college football we can. Mm, there it is. Is it wild to be here, being where you're from, but now, like, like I said, you've had a chance to play in Jordan Hare as a player, but on the opposite side of the field. Um, now you're going to be wearing the orange and blue. Like, how wild is that? Like, how surreal is that for you? Well, so the craziest thing, so in 2010, I had a buddy who was the center at South Carolina. And he was, like, grew up with my brothers, like, stayed at my house and stuff, like, really close family friend. But I was, like, close, like, Marshawn Lattimore, um, Stephen Garcia, Jadavian Clowney, like, I, like, know those guys. Like, Connor Shaw was a big one. Like, mm-hmm. I remember I'd tell people I knew Connor Shaw before he had hair, which is, like, if you know South yeah. Carolina football, like, that was the dude. And um, so I remember watching Auburn and, like, watching Cam Newton beat him twice and stuff, yeah. like, in mm-hmm. the SEC championship. And, like, you know, for me to just kind of full circle moment, I mean, my brothers and dad talk about it all the time, like, seeing that SEC patch. Like, you know, when I was five years old, you know, my brother said I was always going to be, you know, this big-time football player and stuff. And, I mean, you know, you – Growing up, that's what you want to be. And then, you know, you end up at Western Kentucky, and I was blessed for the opportunities I had. But that's not where any kid, you know, grows up and wants to be. I mean, I'm sure it was the same for you when you, you know, had to leave North Carolina, and you're like, yeah. you know, this is where I wanted to be now. I'm at ECU. Same thing. I mean, did you grow up and say, I'm going to go play at Tulsa? You know what I'm saying? No. And that's <laughs> You know. The disdain. He's like, no, that's not, not, that's not what the dream was right there. Yeah. And I mean, so that's what kind of, you know, you look at it and I mean, like what I tell people is like, you don't know how much you really want the dream until you almost can't have it and like you almost lose it. And I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. you know, now looking back and having the opportunity, like getting to play against these schools, like I got to play against Michigan State and I'm like, you know, that's Michigan State. Or even my freshman year, I played Wisconsin and they had Jonathan Taylor. And yeah. I mean, I'm like looking across and I'm like, you know, like this is real college football. Right. And then I'd have to play at home. And I mean, I love WKU. It's, you know, it means a lot to me, but you're playing in front of 25,000 people. It's just not the same. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, so I mean, it's it's been special to be able to, you know, actually get to come play at a school like this. Like we're going to get to go play LSU and Texas A&M and like, Places Georgia. that are, you know, Georgia, yeah. Alabama, like places that like, you know, that's, you grew up hearing about Death Valley and LSU in a night game. Like yeah. that's, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's a premier thing, playing in College Station. Like that's something that's like, you know, I'll be, be able to tell my kids about it. Your last chance is an Auburn Tiger to go do that for a exactly. minute. Yeah, Exactly. So, that so should be fun. You guys have been playing for a long time, right? Um, and this is your last year, last opportunity to play collegiate ball. Um, you went through quite a bit of injury stuff last year in your um, last season. Um, we've asked everybody about this, and I want to hear from all three of you in regards to this. What's the thing that keeps you going doing this? Like putting yourself through the summer workouts every year and getting back up and, you know, throughout the season, Nick's pains, all that kind of stuff, keep pushing to do it. What's the thing that motivates you to continue towards the goal of wherever you want to be? with this football thing? Because you guys could have hung it up after this year. You could have been like, all right, cool, man. I had my fun in college. I'm yeah. done. Like, you graduated already, right? Yeah. Like, you've got a degree, you know. So I- I'll start with you. What keeps motivating you to keep doing this football stuff? Um, <clears throat> I think for me, it's just like, I hate being doubted. Like, I felt like after I left Carolina, I was doubted. Like, I couldn't play. Like, I wasn't good enough. Went to ECU, did good. I was like, okay, I want more. You know, people doubted me if I could come play in the SEC, if I could play at a bigger school. And um, I think I'm proving the doubters wrong. And I, that just really pushes me, you know, towards my goals of going to the next level and, and trying to, you know, last there and play good and playing good here while I'm at Auburn. So, mm. Why do the things that suck every day? 
I mean, I got kind of, I mean, I can play off of what you say and I'll get there, but like my two are my God and my family. Like mm -hmm. to me, you know, being a Christian stuff, like you're supposed to do everything you can to honor and exalt your God. And I mean, for me, playing the game of football has given me more opportunities than so many people in this world will see and like get to talk to people that I'll never get to talk to. And I mean, for me, it's just honoring and glorifying him. And then I mean, man, my family, my dad was a high school football player, had to go work on our family farm, like never got a chance to go play college football. Both my brothers were 6'1 and 6'2 and went to a D2 school. Mm. And you know, I mean, going to a D2 school, you're not gonna go to the NFL unless you're the man, you know? Right. And I mean, they didn't have that opportunity. They weren't blessed with the size and stuff. And I mean, for me, you know, I was blessed with the size. It's even why I wear 53. My brothers were 51 and 55. So mm. for me, it was, you know, like that's my way to honor my family and I mean, kind of piggybacking on what you said about proving the doubters wrong. Like, I had so many people tell me I couldn't go do something. I remember, I mean, I had coaches tell me I couldn't play tackle at Western Kentucky. And now here I am at Auburn playing mm -hmm. tackle. And it's like, you know, for me, it's more of, it's, yeah, it's proving the doubters wrong, but it's proving the people who believed in me that they were right. Like oh, what I was man. telling y'all, like, my brothers are 10 years older my whole life. They told me I was going to go play and be this great, you know, football player and, you know, live the dream that my whole family kind of has had growing up and stuff. So, I mean, to have the ability to have my family and stuff live through me and stuff, like, it makes it easy. Like, what um, I like to say, like, I don't have to go play football. Like, I get to. Like, I'm 23 years old and I'm living the dream of when I was eight years old, if you would ask me what I'm doing, I'd say I'm doing this right now. Like, yep. so it's like, you know, I get to prove that eight-year-old kid, like, he can look at me and be like, dang, like that's, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's how I ended up. So, I mean, that's what kind of keeps me going, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, Dylan? <clears throat> I would like to give all my honor and glory to God, the man above. If he gives me birth, I'm gonna go work every day. I mean, I work for my mother and my father. I like to retire them one day, you know? Mm -hmm. I work for my nieces and nephews, little cousins, cause they don't have someone to look up to. I can be that person for them. Uh, at this point, I'm not fighting for myself. I'm fighting for my loved ones. Mm. He gave me strength. I will use every muscle in my body to get the job done. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Um, my dad says that, you know, your mark as a man is being able to take care of, of your loved ones mm. or the people around you. So it's, it's kind of cool to hear everybody say, you know, I do it for the person next to me. I do it for, for family, mm -hmm. right? That's uh, kind of like an offensive lineman philosophy. Though. Yeah. Like you have to work for the guy right next, next to you. Next to you. you know well, saying, I mean, it's sure. at the end of the day, like, we're not catching, like, let's be real, boys. We're not catching touchdowns. We're not throwing yeah. them. We're not running them. <laughs> all I can do is block the guy in front of me. But if we all five do it the right way, you know, I tell the receivers, I saw even, like, Damari, when he scored, I was like, hey, like, celebrate with us this time. Like, wait. Right. <laughs> now you're going to have to wait 20 <laughs> seconds for me to get down there. Like, we're coming. Yeah. But, you know, like, because for us, like, when they score, it's like I'm scoring myself. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I mean, when you don't have the opportunity to actually do that, and like you have to watch someone else do it. Like you have Listen, to kind of be selfless. You may not throw a touchdown, but they damn sure ain't throwing one without you either yeah. without blocking. You know, and that's so. what's I mean, I get just as excited watching those dudes score. Like and I'm like, you know, like I was a small part in, you know, watching that and like having that happen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I mean I, you gotta take pride in it. Like it's just part of it. Nice. Uh I wanna end with the, the obvious question. Brand new coach, Coach Hugh Freeze is, is in the building, man. There's a lot of excitement around Auburn football right now. Recruiting is good. I mean, you guys all came in as transfers. Um, how do you guys feel Hugh Freeze has set this up for you to go out and perform in the fall? And what's the feeling around the building from your perspective in terms of excitement for the season and what you guys think you can accomplish as a team? Shoot, sure, man. I think I think Coach Freeze has just set a standard. Um, faith, family, and football. Like, believe in your brother. Like you guys were just talking about believing your brother. He'll believe in you. And um, you know, he's kind of bringing a new energy to the program. I feel like, um, you know, I see it all the time. The excitement when he, he he goes to speak to people. It's like the atmosphere is just, you know, something that I I haven't, you know, really seen in a while. Uh, being from somebody that's come from three schools, like it's 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 kind of nice to see like you know that type of hype around a program and uh, uh, really believing that we can really win games and we can really uh, compete in the SEC and you know if we 
when that SEC championship will comes after that. So uh, it's just an, it, it's an exciting time for Auburn football and, um, you know, exciting for the future, too. Mm. Guys, Hugh Freeze, man, what's it going to be like this year? I think it's going to be electric. I mean, what he's saying, like, best way I can do it is, I mean, you know, the past is you got guys like us. There's 40 new guys. There's a new coach. There's a new everything. Like, don't look at the past anymore. Like, and I hate, you know, the past is dead. Like, that Auburn football that y'all have been used to ever since, what, 2014 when y'all went to the national championship, ever since it's kind of been down. But, I mean, even – First team meeting, he told me, he's like, there's been five programs in the last 15 years to go to two national championships. That's and right. Auburn's one of them. So why can't we go to a third? You know what I'm saying? And I mean, bringing in guys like us, and I mean, I know these guys can kind of say the same. And like, why I chose Auburn is like, what better place to make a difference? Like, it's easy to go somewhere that's had us won 10 games last year and win 10 games again, you know? But what's the fun in that? Like, that's, you know, that's easy to me. Like, if you want to challenge, go to a place that you got to establish a winning culture. And I mean, even for me and Avery especially, this is our last shot. Like, yeah. all yeah. I can do is try to establish a culture that will live on past when me and him are going to be playing at Auburn. And I mean, yeah. that's, you know, what better way than to come in here with a new coach and, like, the dude's... He's got some electricity to him. Like okay. he's, you know, and he, <laughs> he's got people believing in our facility. They're like, you know, and you can see it in people's eyes from when we even got here in January. You know, I mean, I just hope we can usher in a new era of Auburn football at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Dylan. I would say it's the freeze era. <laughs> he's won in this conference before. He's going to do it again. And with the squad he's built, I feel like we have enough talent to get the job done. I mean, how fast we're going to be pushing the ball. No one can stay in front of us. The offense is going to be great. The defense is going to stop the ball. And we're going to take home a lot of wins this year. For sure. Like okay, I like it. Yeah. Well, Hold on. Let, let, me, let me make sure we do this before we sign off. Because okay. I want to make sure. Because a part of what we want to do is make sure people know where to find you. Right. Are y'all on social media? Yeah. 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 And tell people which social media platform they need to follow you on to keep up with what you got going on out here. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at AveryJ.Jones. Uh, follow me on Twitter at AveryJ underscore Jones. So pretty simple. All right. We'll put that up on the screen for the people. Now watch that. You think his – all you got to do is follow me on Instagram at, at Gunner Britton. That's a, that's that's a tough it. one. Nice, and nice and simple. Twitter's GunnerB75. All right. You can follow me on Instagram at Dylan.Wade1. I repeat, Dylan.Wade1. <laughs> <laughs> you can also follow me on Twitter at IC underscore Wade. That's I C E Y underscore my last name. <laughs> that's it. I forgot you was you were you had the icy situation going on, but that's yeah, that's funny. what's up, man. Well, you can follow us at the War Report on every social media platform. Also, follow at Golden's Cast Iron. Uh, they sponsored this whole event. Uh, they provided the wonderful cast iron products that we ate off of tonight. Yep. Also, want to thank Two Two Nine Eight Vintage Butcher Shop and Restaurant for sponsoring all the food that we ate. We ate some wonderful cuts of meat tonight. Thanks to Vintage, a great community partners, Golden's Cast Iron, Two Two Nine Eight Vintage. Uh, big thanks to them for having us, uh, helping us put on this yeah. event, man, and have the line come down and sit and talk with us. Um, we look forward to seeing what you guys accomplish in the fall. We hope you'll come back and talk to us after it's all over. Uh, to talk about your many accomplishments. Yes, so. indeed. Yes, sir. Thank Absolutely. you, guys. Appreciate it. Guys, really. thanks for joining us for another Fireside. We'll be back at you guys soon with another position group. We're signing off, and as always, War Eagle. War Eagle.